Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, author of Visualizing Happiness in Every Area of Your Life and host of this podcast, Incredible Life Creator. And today I have with me Karubal Derbe, also known as KD. Hey, KD, how are you? Yeah, how you doing, Ms. Kimberly? Dr. Kimberly, how you doing? I am doing great. So excited to highlight you here. So um, KD has helped me with photography needs more than once. Uh, recently at the Supriya Gala, which if you've been listening, I've interviewed people about that, and that was a great success. But just so you can know, KD, I'm going to read his bio. KD grew up in the vibrant and cultural, culturally rich nation of Ethiopia, where his passion for capturing the world through a lens began. Immersed in the diverse landscapes and traditions of his homeland, KD developed a keen eye for detail and an appreciation for the art of photography. Now based in Atlanta, Georgia, KD has become a dedicated and passionate photographer. His work spans a variety of photography services, including portrait photography, event photography, and headshot photography. His ability to capture the essence of a moment and the personality of his subjects has made him a sought-after photographer in the Atlanta area. Katie's passion for photography is evident in every shot he takes, whether he is working on a personal project or a professional assignment. He approaches each opportunity with enthusiasm and creativity. He believes that every photograph tells a story and strives to bring out the unique narrative of each subject he photographs. In his spare time, Katie loves to shoot pool and play pool tournaments. All right, Katie, well, I'd like to hear about you. You know, I know you came from Ethiopia, and for us uh, in the U.S., that seems like a far, far land, uh, someplace far away. So why don't you tell us about you? Uh, so uh, as you guys know, uh, my name is uh, Kerbo Derbe, but people call me KD. I go with KD, it's easier. But yeah, I grew, uh, I grew up in Ethiopia and came here. Ethiopia is a, it's a country in Africa, in the eastern part of Africa, which is uh, a lot of people don't know, but should know about it, which Ethiopia is the most diverse, the most ancient country with religion, with culture, with everything, with nature, blessed with nature. So Ethiopia has been uh, has been a great nation. So I came from uh, Ethiopia. I grew up there. It was a it was a good uh, bring up. Uh, so when I grew up in Ethiopia, I was uh, in the city. I was living in the city, but there was also the the culture effect, the 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 religion. Everything helps you to grow up. So I grew up in the area which is called Addis Ababa. That's the name of the city. That's the capital. So I grew up there until I am 17. And I came here when I was 17 to, to Atlanta. So since then, I've lived here. It's been great. Atlanta is great. It's, uh, Atlanta is good for uh, people for who are doing business, people who are entrepreneurs. So it's been great. Yeah, so um, tell us a little bit, bit about Ethiopia as far as when you're growing up, what are some of your best memories? Are there certain traditions or things you do that maybe is unique? Uh, everything we do over there in general is unique, I would say. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, uh, our culture, our uh place how we build houses how we do things is just different the food we eat we eat with our bare hands we don't you we don't usually use a, a spoon or a fork we use uh, with our bare hand to eat food the food is uh we usually have a a, a bread called injera so the injera is like a spongy it's like a tortilla, but it's made of a different uh, material, which is called tafe. 
So we usually eat food with that. We uh we eat like I said, we eat with our bare hand. So that that also helps us with like you know your body knows when you are eating with your hands. So it's really good for your health too. But that's something that uh, that I want to mention. Also, the food uh the food we eat is made out of different things. So let's say we eat uh, when you go to a restaurant, you would have uh food that is like raw meat. We eat raw meat like like a lion. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so that culture started when uh, Ethiopia was fight, uh, fighting back in uh, 120 years ago. Ethiopia fought uh, uh, in a place called in Ethiopia and uh, Tigray region. There was a, a fight between uh, Italy and Ethiopia. So back in the day, uh, 100 years ago, 120 years ago, they used to hunt uh, the the oxes and they killed them. And then it was accessible to eat uh, the raw meat. They just, they would just have a sauce, uh, like a, a hot sauce. So they, they eat the raw, the raw meat of an ox. Mm -hmm. So if you see a person that is, eating that that is exactly Ethiopia <laughs> so this in general Ethiopia is a different country rich with uh, resources rich with uh, culture so Ethiopia is a country that people need to know of and need to travel over there more yeah so what things do you miss that uh, living here now what things do you miss from there the most I miss uh, being able to, uh, when I was living in Ethiopia, people were not busy. Here in America, people are so busy. Mm -hmm. They're occupied with their job. They're occupied with their, with their phone, with their computers, you know. People don't have time here. But back in uh, Ethiopia, people don't, they don't, I don't know the the current state but back back five six seven years ago when i was a kid in Ethiopia, we don't if even if we do have cell phones we don't just stay in our house be on social media you know we go out we we hang out with our friends we hike we walk all the time so we, we uh when you are living in, in ethiopia you are uh you are living with the nature so you see you go out you're not just in an office in a box just working on something you know i i really miss that being able to uh you know use all the resources like use the nature like the air is like here in america you don't need uh back in ethiopia you don't need ac almost all the houses in Ethiopia they don't have AC system because the nature is just perfect like it's not super cold it's not super hot so I miss that like being able to experience that you know here if your car doesn't have AC you're screwed up in the summer <laughs> and the winter you're, you're, if the heater is not working <laughs> it's gonna be bad mm -hmm. So I'm, I I'll kind of miss that too. Exactly. And so then you come here and I'm guessing you were in high school then and then you went on to college. So what did you study in college? So I didn't finish college, but I was studying uh, management information systems, which is a uh, business and uh, technology, information technology together. So you could do a lot of stuff with that, but that wasn't my thing when I when I thought about it. We're gonna talk about it more later, but college wasn't my thing. So I uh pivoted to doing photography. I used to do photography when I was a kid, but not not as a career. 
but now uh, as that's what I do for a living right now. So, nice. so it's good. What kind of things did you take pictures of when you were growing up? What What did you like to take pictures of? So back when when I was a kid, my uh friend a friend of mine, his dad gifted him uh, a little Canon camera, a small one. So he used to uh uh give it to me, and then when we go hiking, or when we go for a walk, like sometimes when I when we were a kid, when I was in Ethiopia, we would uh go to the forest. Like it's not, it would be like a three hour walk. And then we would just go over there, hike, walk a little bit, and then we uh with that camera that he gives me, I I'll, I'll take a picture of the like the the forest, uh or or the wild animals we see over there, the the waterfalls, and then I used to uh give the pictures to him, and then he used to edit it. I wasn't editing at the time. I I wasn't editing photos at the time. But I stick pictures for him. So that's how I got started. Very nice. Yeah. And I know the joy of that. So I like to walk at my lunchtime um, at this park. And sometimes I take pictures of bugs or butterflies or birds. Or one day I saw a muskrat. So it's fun to find those beautiful, you know, animals and flowers and things like that. in in waterfalls are even nicer. Yeah, people people don't do that anymore. I don't, I wonder why, but like I said, people here I've became like that too, but people are occupied with things here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, it's good to take time. Like I said, I try and do it at my lunchtime. I go for a walk. But you have you're right, you have to cut out time to do those things if you're gonna do them. Otherwise you're just stuck in a box, right? <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna be consumed. <laughs> exactly so now you're doing photography and um uh, tell me about that so uh when uh, i do photography now this is my career so i take uh, i take uh photos for uh events like we did last time in the uh, last week in the gale Mm -hmm. So I go to events, people would hire me for the event, and then I capture all the moments for it, the event they are hosting. Uh, I also do uh, portrait photos uh, for people. People were, would, uh, would reach out to me, like couples sometimes, even like real estate agents. They, they, they need photos for their social media, for their uh post a card for their website. So photography is so useful. Uh, it's so useful for business owners, I would say. Mm -hmm. It is. So and money. it's so important to network. So um, do you want to kind of give the story about how you met Sharifa and then how you ended up doing sure. the pictures for us? Sure, sure. So that story is it's an amazing story. Yeah, that was a good story. So what happened is uh back I would say six months ago, six, seven months ago, uh I was just going at a at a park taking pictures. I was taking a picture of some some couples, I was taking a picture of them, and then I finished that and then there was a restaurant underneath of the park so just sitting there eating uh ice cream just hanging out by myself and then like four five people came uh together and then sharifa was one of them so she came near me and then she said are you a photographer i was holding my camera she said are you a photographer i told her yeah i am and then we were talking a little bit and then she said she invited me to take pictures of, uh, I, I don't know what it was, but it was uh, a business meeting. You'll talk about that more later, but it was a business meeting, I would say. And then uh, she told me that, come up in Marietta. I'm staying there. I'm not, I'm not from Atlanta, but she told me that she travels a lot for business meetings. 
And then she told me that if you came, uh, uh, if you are gonna be able to come in Marietta and take take pictures of uh, my group, she said it will be a good opportunity for you to meet great people. And then I went over there in Marietta early in the morning, met her at her at her hotel. Uh, I went there talking to her for like an hour. She's she told me that she's a mentor for business owners, people, usually people who are doing business, service business. And then she was also mentoring me for like an hour, talking talking to me about how to go, how I can uh, grow my photography business. She, uh, she, she was, she is a uh, great at it, mentoring people. And then after a couple of uh, hours, we went to a different hotel and then we were taking pictures of you guys, all the people that came for the uh, business conference. And then next thing you know, uh, I start uh, sharing my information with business owners that came over there. I actually took a photo of uh, uh, a business person. I forgot his name. Yeah. His name is uh, Lamont. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a, a, a real estate guy. He came from Chicago for business. And then now he lives here. But I was taking pictures of him too. And then second thing you know, I was just uh, making connections after that. It was a great opportunity. Yeah. And that's how I I was at that. Meeting. Yeah, that's how, that's I made how we met. Yeah. Exactly. And then this last weekend, um, when I knew the Sapria Gala was coming up, I'm like, everyone's going to be dressed up and I'm going to see a lot of my friends that I haven't seen in a while, you know, because we've been on Zoom so much. Talk about not getting out. We've been on Zoom so much and seeing each other on Zoom. But I'm like, oh, we get to really see people in person. And so yeah. it was really exciting to meet them. And, you know, you took our pictures, but also you captured you know, us hugging and, you know, yeah, interacting. Moments. so it's, it isn't just a portrait where you're just posing all the time, but you, you were taking pictures of the event and catching those memories and those emotions. And it was, it was awesome. It was, it was pretty good. Yeah. We, we made a lot of business owners, a lot of uh, people who came to donate uh, for the gal. It was it was it was a good meeting to connect with people who are high achievers, business owners. It was pretty good. Exactly. So, um, when you're going to take a picture or set up a picture, what are the some of the things you think about as far as like to get the perfect photo? So to get the perfect photo, I would say there. Are, a couple of things that you need to make sure first thing is outfit i would say because even if you have you have the best photographer if you are not you know dressed well it's not good it, it, it maybe the the photo might be looking good but you as a person on the photo you're not gonna look good so you, you have to dress well to take a picture and also have a good background and then the main thing is having a good lighting. Even for doing videos, for making videos, uh, taking, when you take a picture, if you don't have a good lighting, it's just, there's no, you can't see anything. It's like our, the lens of a camera is like our eye. If our eye cannot see anything, it can't see in, anything in, in the dark, right? So if there is no light, there's no, there's no nothing that you could take a picture of. It might be dark. It's gonna be dark. So also when you take a picture, if you don't have a good lighting, all the details is not gonna be visible. So you're let's say we're taking a headshot, right? If I take a headshot of somebody and then even though their face could be seen, you're not gonna see the details of their hair, their skin, their color, 
their texture. So you, when you take a picture, you have to be uh, careful to get all the details on the photo. That's what I would say. Exactly. And I remember asking you about that white filter on your camera. Yeah. What did you tell me that was? And I was like, oh, yeah, I definitely want that on there. Yes. Yeah, so it's a flash. I put on a, a flash on the camera and then on top of the, uh, the, the flash, I put on a lantern, which is a low plastic foamy thingy, which, is, which makes the light flattering on your face. So it's not good. You're not going to have like harsh details. They say it's not going to have like your face. It's not going to contrast, like it's not going to be dark. It's not going to be darker and super lighty here. It just make it flattering mm -hmm. on your face. Beautiful. So would you like to show us some of your um, photos that you've done? Now, the people who are listening, they're going to have to look on YouTube to see the photos, but we can kind of describe them. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me share my screen. I'm going to share. And what is your Instagram so that if people wanted to be looking at it while they're listening? My Instagram is uh, Kiru's, uh, as you guys can see over oh, here. Oh, there it is right there. K-I-R-U-S-S -S -S pictures. Yeah, yeah Kiru's pictures, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this... These are a couple of photos. This I made a new page like six months ago. It's it's new, but I I I I started posting. Mm -hmm. So this I took a photo of this girls that had a graduation. These are Ethiopian people that live here in uh in America in Atlanta. You can see that their outfit. You see, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. You can see the flowers along the border of the. Yeah. Gorgeous. So this is the picture that I took mm -hmm. two weeks ago. This this is my friend. We're just uh trying to do a recreate a Vogue photo that we saw on, on uh, Google. Just uh you know having a sometimes having a photographer friend, you get a free picture sometimes. So <laughs> oh, we just try to recreate a, a Vogue picture just trying recreating things that's how you learn and that's how you uh you know that's how you grow as a photographer you uh you gotta it's a skill it's like a muscle if you don't train your uh, creativity you're gonna lose it so you have to, sometimes you know you gotta take your time try the different things that could inspire you you know so there's like a, a vlog thing that we did. Well, look at the perspective on that. So if you're listening, you'll have to just go to the Instagram and see this or YouTube when it's on YouTube. Yeah. But you can see the detail. I mean, it looks very 3D. Yeah. You see, he's making like a a, a fashion show walk. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Also, this uh, she's a makeup artist. This is the portrait photo that I took for her. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, you can see all the details here. She's a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. Also, she uh, we're promoting uh, a uh, a business that uh, which is right here. It says uh, Elizabeth Habisha Jewelry. Mm -hmm. It's a jewelry uh. Uh, business. Mm -hmm. She's wearing the the cross as you see over here. Mm -hmm. Just this uh, portrait photo that I took for her. She's a makeup artist, so we we're just outlining how she does makeup. You know, this is one of the things that, as a business owner, if you want to promote your business, you gotta have pictures, mm -hmm. not just pictures, but a good professional pictures. So this this is my page you could you guys could see this the guy that I that, that I was telling you uh -huh. Lamont yeah those are great pictures of him yeah it was at the 
we were talking we were taking pictures of you guys right at the mm -hmm. hotel right yeah so when, you, when you open the door over there on the room that i was taking pictures of y'all mm -hmm. there was a, a deck i took a picture i took a picture of him over there on the deck those are awesome pictures you can see like all the the city vibe behind This is one of one of the person mm -hmm. that I took pictures of over there. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah. You even took it of us. Actually, we were kind of like moving and talking and you were yeah. able to catch us kind of in action. <laughs> yeah, you guys were were busy at the time too. You guys gotta gotta go to a business conference after the photo shoots. Mm -hmm. But I was I was able to take a good pictures of y'all. Exactly. It was, it was we were rushing at the time, but we would have to, you know, you gotta take pictures uh for your business sometimes. So that's right. Even though it was rushing, we had to do it. So it was a a pretty good experience. Yeah, you worked quickly, and there was a few of us there, so you were able yeah. to get us all in, and even did some group pictures and um some even kind of set up pictures where we were, you know, talking to another person or talking to another two people. So, and yeah. you know, that's how it is in business. You have to have not just your face shots, of course, those are important, but you want to have shots of you with clients, you working with clients, you shaking hands with clients. Yeah. People, they just, they don't want to see your face all the time. They got to see action. They got to see your product that you are selling or their service you are selling people like people as humans be we like to see to trust somebody mm -hmm. that's why we take pictures if you let's say if you are trying to if you are trying to buy uh let's say uh, a glass a glass for your eyes right and then if you don't didn't see what what you're able to get you're not gonna buy that uh glass right mm -hmm. so it's just simple things that a business need to consider it have to be in a professional way so yeah pro product photography is one of them yes and i know kd you're very much a perfectionist so when yeah. you do the job you're gonna do it right so yeah, I, I, I want to do it right all, all the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, any other words for business people or anything else about your photography you'd like to talk about? Uh, I would I would actually want to talk about uh, uh, how photography helps business grow, the, how photography could grow their business exponentially. So, uh, first thing you know, a photography is is a is a powerful tool for business to enhance your brand presence in several ways. Uh, your brand identity, image. You want to have a high quality images that help uh, establish and reinforce your brand identity. Let's say you have a social media right for your business. I always like to talk about an uh, analogy. That's uh, that's my identity. So let's say you have a, a, a social media, right? Let's say you have Instagram, an Instagram page for your restaurant. People uh, want to have a good, let's say you go into the restaurant, you see their Instagram, right? If you didn't see a good food, posted on the on the social media that they have on their Instagram page you're not going to buy it because you want to have all the time if you have a social media for your business you have to be able to have a good brand identity that stand off from your competition so that is something that business owner 
need to consider. Also, uh, you could use uh, photography for your marketing and advertising for your business. You, you want to have a compelling uh, photos that are crucial for your marketing campaigns uh, for your, uh, if you want to run, uh, let's say you want to run a, a Facebook ad, right? That's one of the things that you were talking about in the couple of uh, podcasts that you did, right? Mm -hmm. So business owners, when let's say they are running a ad, uh, a Facebook ad on their business, if they don't have a good photo, a compelling photo on their uh on their ad, on their Facebook ad, people are not gonna click the link. Uh, just like clicking is the first step for a, a person that is using Facebook on your ad. He gotta click the, the photo. If he is not seeing a compelling photo uh, for the ad, he's not gonna be uh, attracted to it and then click the link and then see your website and buy whatever you are selling. So just simple things like that, that business owners need to consider is having a compelling photo for their marketing and advertising. Also you, uh, for business owners, they want, they need to have a, a good product presence for their, whatever they are selling. If they have a website, Let's say I, that's why we took a picture of uh, that girl that was doing makeup. She she was having uh, a cross on her chest, right? That was a good uh, presentation of the product on her on somebody using the product. You don't want you just don't you don't want to have a uh, your product just sitting on the table, right? You want to have it people using it, like. People got to use your product. That's how big uh, marketing uh, companies use it. So we uh, be, uh, people that have business need to really consider reaching out to a good photographer that knows what he's doing, you know, one knows what he's doing and then could outline what whatever they are selling. Okay. So I wanted to ask you, um, kind of change topics now. Um, so no your faith is very important to you. In fact, you sent me a YouTube video of your, um, you know, your, your church service. I don't know if you call it a yes. church where you are. Um, yeah. and I found it, um, I I've never been in a service like that ever in my life. It was, yeah um beautiful singing chanting everyone was wearing white um yes. what 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 tell me about your faith why is it important to you about your church uh so uh we as human we got to know where we came from and how we were created right so if a uh, if a person don't know where he came from He's gonna. He's not gonna have a purpose. He's not gonna have identity, right? So, people gotta have a good relationship with their God. That's how you find your happiness. That's how you find your relationship with God. When you go to the church, not just go to church, but have a good relationship. Talk to your God. Have have a have have a conversation with Him. You know, that's that's where you get all the happiness that you deserve too. You deserve happiness. People, people deserve happiness. All the things we do in this in this world, right? If it if it's if it's not making us happy, what's the point of it? If we just work hard, make money, buy things, buy cars, having having an expensive luxury car, expensive house, a penthouse that 
did, does not make you happy there's no point in life if you're not, if you're not happy so that's that's how I, that's how i get my happiness from i get my happiness from from god talking to him going to the church uh helping people in their religion talking to them you know that's how people got to be people got to be community community and people got to have sorry people got to have a community in their religion not just go to church you know you got to have a community that serves you that helps you in your religion uh you know sometimes just going to the church by yourself it could be hard but when you have a community when you have friends that reach out to you and ask you like give you a call are you gonna come to the church this year are you gonna uh, i mean are you gonna come to the church this sunday are you gonna help us do things you know it's a community too so having a good relationship with god and having a community that helps you to have a good relationship with god it's it's important yeah, 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 it really is. And the church you go to, um, what is the name of your church or the kind of church you go to? It's a uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Ethiopian uh, Orthodox Church. Ethiopian Orthodox Church, yeah. A lot of I don't I wonder why people don't know about it, but it's or uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Church is the ancient church in the world, one of the ancient church and the word so that's where it starts that's how everything starts so from uh orthodox christianity uh catholicism came from orthodox christians and then from there protestant people they protest from catholic church and then they made their own church and they called themselves protestant and then from there, you know, they divide into many churches, Baptist. Uh, it's, it's, it's too many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know them all, but Ethiopian Orthodox Church is one of the ancient church in the world. Yeah. One of the oldest ones around. Yeah. Even, like the beginning church. Yeah. Even I could, uh, I could show you guys. I could search it up and show you a church that is that is in Ethiopia. One of the old churches in the world. I'm searching it right now. I'm sharing it. As you guys can see. Oh, wow. That is an old church. Yeah, it's, this is a church that is made from one rock. Think about it for a second. It says here, Lalibela. It's a as a town in Amhara religion of the, yeah, it says, you see, it's made out of one rock. Wow, that's amazing. They just cut it right out of the rock. Yeah. That is totally amazing. That is totally amazing. Wow. You guys can see over here. Wow, so these are, great pictures of that yeah you see this is one of the the use of photography to showcase a church <laughs> exactly someone was a great photography who took those pictures yeah so as you guys can see it's just you could you guys could see here right how how old ethiopian orthodoxy is Mm -hmm. yeah looks like from another world yeah a lot of people go here a lot of people every 
every uh every year uh we celebrate uh Easter in the church. Mm -hmm. So for for Easter you would see a lot of people uh you would see a lot of people going here from all over the country just to see the ceremony. Amazing. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, it's it's one of the the church that is super old in Ethiopia. It was made by a king called it was named after him. He's a saint. Mm -hmm. He's a king in Ethiopia. His name is Lali Bella. Mm -hmm. And then the church was named after him. It's like he built 12 church out of rock. Think about it for a second. It just, out of just rock. Chiseled, they just chiseled it out of a rock. Yeah. You could you could search up when Lalibala was made. Lalibala. Yeah, it's Lalibala was made in in almost a thousand years ago. Wow, a thousand years old. That's amazing old. for sharing that. Yeah. I, I, I love history and I hope my listeners love history. So we took a little detour there with the history, but it was worth that. That was so interesting. Yeah. Imagine the technology there was no technology back in and that time a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. There there is no machines, there is no I don't think there was no uh, cement. Mm -hmm. You see the how orthodox he is is just amazing. Like he gave he get all the knowledge from uh from God. He got it from God. He's a saint. He uh he's a saint. He fought himself from the Satan. He was a king too. So he's just a different person. He's an orthodox person. So it's it's amazing. Yeah, that really, really is amazing. So now I'd like to ask you if people wanted to connect with you, hire you for your services, where can they find you? Uh so they can find me on, on the Instagram page. Uh the one that I showed you guys. Go ahead and say it again so people can get can write it down or get it. It's uh Kiru's pictures, K-I-R-U-S-S -S pictures. K-I-R-U-S-S -S pictures. So they could just DM me on there and then reach out to me, leave a message, and they could reach out to me. Yeah. Yep. And you're in the Atlanta area. So. In the Atlanta area. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. So now I have a personal question for you. Mm -hmm. What gives you the most happiness and fulfillment in your life right now? Right now, I would say uh, uh, my religion and then the relationship that I have was, was God and my family, my friends. You know, you, people don't need a lot of things to be happy. That is something that I, uh, that people need to agree on 100% because... If you think about it, people 100 years ago, not, not just 100 years ago, 2,000 years ago, if you uh, find a person and ask him about happiness, how happy he is, he, he wouldn't tell you what type of car he's driving, right? He mm -hmm. wouldn't tell right. you uh, what type of house he's living. He would tell you the simplest things, his, how he have relationship was people you know just simple things in life make you happy the nature you know if you're not consumed with buying things if you're not consumed with social media you know having that space you know you want to have a space between materialism and yourself so that is something people need to consider just to be happy, you got to find your happiness from yourself. You got to find your happiness from the nature. 
that is something that I, that people need to do more of. So for me, being happy means helping people. Being happy means having relationship was having a good good relationship with people that makes me happy beautiful well thank you so much for being on the podcast today and for, for sure. sharing your wisdom and your experience and um it was awesome i do have one last question for you before we finish mm -hmm. what is your best advice on living an incredible amazing life So to, to live an incredible life, I would have three uh three things. I would say make time for your family and then the relationship with God. And second thing is make yourself happy. Allow yourself happy. Don't wait on the things to to achieve things, to achieve your goals. Don't wait until you achieve that. Make yourself happy now. Once you get the things that you wish you've been wishing to get, once you got the, those things, you might not be happy. So try to find your happiness from yourself. And then third thing is don't forget that you're going to die. And so all the small things that you're con concerned about right now, when you are in, in the deathbed, you're not going to think of it you're not going to think about it. That's one of the things that people need to think about. You know, you think that you're not going to die, but imagine, not just imagine, you know that how many people could die in one day. You might not be able to wake up this day. So think about that for a second. So that's, that's, that's what we need to think more. So everything that I discussed, everything that I say comes down to this one. Don't forget that you're gonna die. So allow to allow yourself to be happy, make time to God, make time to have a good relationship with God, you'll be happy. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Kimberly. It was it was good to have a good communication and this podcast with you i've learned with you a lot and then we'll continue to learn and go together and be happy together <laughs> all right we'll talk to you again soon you too